Dear friends, this week we read the portion of Ayeshev. And this week's portion talks about the story of Joseph and his brothers and how his brothers, who did not get along with him, sold him down to Egypt. Joseph is sold as a slave in Egypt to an important family. But Joseph all of a sudden finds himself at the young age of 17, alone, without his family, without his past, without his father. And he is in a foreign place without any connections, without anyone there to help him in any way. And Joseph there quickly excels in his work as a servant to his master Potiphar, and he makes him and he appoints him as the leader of his entire household. And Yosef is actually feeling a little bit good that at least he's found his place to a certain extent. But Yosef was surrounded by a very different environment. Egypt was not very moral. Egypt was not a place where Torah and Judaism was uh, existing at all. And here Yosef was trying to hold on to his Judaism when there was nothing else uh, to support it. And we are told an incredible story that Joseph's uh, master's wife fell in love with him, handsome, dashing, successful, smart, young man, and she wanted to be with him physically. And uh, one day she makes an advance at a very opportune time when no one else is around. And the Torah tells us that at that moment Joseph struggled because on one hand she promised him that if he's with her and gives her what she wants, she will do everything to make him happier and more successful. But on the other hand, where was his moral duty? Where was his moral clarity? The values that he grew up with. And he had that struggle. And at the moment of the struggle, what helped him overcome was he saw the mus, the yaknesh alavit. He saw the splitting image of his father in his head, the long flowing beard, the picture of his father sitting in the front of the Shabbat table, the family surrounding him, the picture of his father praying, his father studying Torah, the pureness and the holiness of his father. When he saw that image, it was clear to him as day, who am I? Joseph, I am a son of Yaakov. I am a Jew. I stand for something. Even though I may be in a place where no one sees what I'm doing, even though I may be looked forsaken, I'm not forsaken. I have a duty to live up to who I am and what I represent. And that image is what helped him run away and not succumb to the temptation and all the great promises. And this is a very important lesson for us because as we live in the world and try to be Jewish, it's not enough to have the knowledge and to know what's right and what's wrong. We need to have that emotional connection. All of us need that the Musti Yark We need that image in our mind that makes it clear who I am, what my identity really is, that touches me to the core, to my gut, to my soul, to my heart, that this is what I stand for, that this is what I represent, that this is my true identity. And many people are able to look back to a parent, to their grandparent, maybe a grandparent, who they had that feeling when they were with them. There was a certain purity, a certain absoluteness, a certain commitment that was beyond logic or reason it was fully there and this is what we all have to try to get and if you don't have that in your life create that in your life create that for yourself create that image of yourself a moment an experience that's so powerful that even in a time of doubt when you recall it it will help you stay grounded help you stay true to who you are give it to your children don't be shy to totally throw yourself in to one type of mitzvah, activity, experience, and do it overboard. Because that's what creates the images of Jewish life. That's what creates the images that stays deep inside of us, that helps us deal with all the challenges and the difficulties that we may have and tries to throw us off track. So God willing, we should all have our demus de we should all have our clear image of the power and the incredible connection of every Jew to God, of every Jew to pureness and, holy, and holiness, of every Jew 
to who our identity really is and uh, may be successful uh, in leading a strong Jewish life. And this is what Hanukkah is all about. We enter Hanukkah Sunday night. Hanukkah really is about the little candle. That candle is, is pure, it's bright in a dark room. It shines and it's clear where it's coming from and what it stands for. That's what we all need to awaken in our life, that candle, that image, to make us be stronger and better Jews. So I want to wish you all Shabbat Shalom. May God bless you all. We love you all. Shabbos Candlelighting Time in Montreal is 3.55 p.m.